seriously, how are you thinking we should test this? Exactly like that, but uh, with real bottles. Except with head protection. Well, have a closer look at what kind of forces are involved. Okay. So, let the bar fight commence. Even though after a few beers it might seem like a good idea to hit somebody over the head with a beer bottle, it's probably not. Nevertheless, we feel inclined to get up close and personal on our testing, and that's where this comes in. This is a football helmet outfitted with a specially designed array of accelerometers that will register any movement of our skull and help us determine whether a full versus an empty beer bottle is more harmful. Plus, it's a nice excuse for me to hit Adam over the head with a bottle, which I regularly want to do. You ready? You know, before I put this on and take some hits to the head, let's put this on a non-human analog just to make sure it's safe, see what kind of forces are involved. Okay. It's ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Okay. Safety systems check. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's not what happens in the movies. Now, it seems like these are a lot harder to break than we thought. And I think that's because of a couple of main reasons. <laughs> What's the matter, old man? Been too long since your last bar fight? One is, in the movies, you're always seeing people smack each other over the head with bottles, and the bottles break really easily. Well, those are fake bottles. It's the movies. And number two, who among us hasn't dropped in broken bottles? They seem quite fragile. But the fact is, they're not. They're actually built to ship. They're built to last. And when you look at shots like this, this, and this, it's pretty clear. These things are tougher than they look. Adam, however, is ow, as ow, tough ow, as he looks. Ow, ow. Not very. <laughs> so when our expert crunches the numbers. That was about 107 Gs. <laughs> the experiment takes a safer turn. And about 100 Gs is the average concussion that we see in the field. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to be wearing that helmet today. I don't blame you. Clearly, getting hit by one of these, even if you're wearing one of these, is a really nasty experience. So nasty, in fact, that we have decided we're not going to do any testing on human subjects today. Out goes the human, and off comes the helmet. The helmet, doing what it was designed to do, was flexing on impact, absorbing energy, and making it difficult to break the bottle. Cue our hard-headed head stuntman with his crown of data-collecting accelerometers. <laughs> well, there you go. Did you get a reading? Yeah, it's about 54 Gs. Awesome! Awesome, but one data point does not a sample make. So in a frenzy of beer and broken glass... 33? Hard man Heinemann smashes away. 11 Gs. Until he's satisfied with a sample set of seven. 34. Which yields an average of 28 Gs. Awesome. Let's continue with an empty bottle. Remember, the myth is that an empty bottle, when smashed, is more damaging than the full. Are you peeing? No. OK. It's the comparison that's the key. OK, here we go. Empty beer bottle. And as the numbers come in, it's clear that comparison does not favor the myth. 13 Gs. So it's about 11 Gs. Less G-force to the head from the empties appears to indicate they do less damage than the full ones. But Adam's got an issue with the experimental design. In general, the data seems to support the idea that it's not looking very good for the myth. But we're seeing huge variances in the G-load on this guy, depending on how hard Jamie swings, which is very hard to control. Clearly, moving forward, we're going to need to remove the variance of the human arm and go with a mechanical solution to solving this problem. I don't think we can call it based on this. No, there is clearly a lot more to this than meets the eye. It's actually kind of thrilling. One way or another, there's more broken glass in our future, though, huh? Yes, there is.